macarons. All right, we're gonna get into that in a second. But I don't know about you, but I love eating them so much and I've decided I wanna learn how to make them. So I've asked my friend Heather of Sweet Heather Ann and her assistant Camilla to show us how to do this in the bakery setting, but also Camilla will show us how to do this at home if we have any of this equipment, which I'm realizing I don't. So maybe I can't make these at home, but let's find You definitely out. can, you yeah. definitely can. All right, so what do we do first? Excellent. Um, so, first of all, you want to make sure you have everything ready. Okay. Um, so macarons, specifically the way we make them, which is the Italian method of meringue, which basically means we're heating sugar and then adding that hot sugar to our meringue. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff that's being timed. And so I always say, read your recipe all the way through and then get all of your ingredients together and then you can start. Um, and that's why Camilla and I kind of work as a team. We always work as a team when we do them, and we find it's a lot better to have two hands going on, and then you know one person's in charge of one thing, one person's in charge of the other things, and it just really goes a lot more smoothly. Yeah, and at home, I don't work as a team. I do yeah, it's okay. my, my own. <laughs> I don't have a friend to come in. No, no, no. I do for myself. Husband, as, long like as, do as long as everything's prepped, and as long as you process the almond flour with the sugar ahead of time, and that's ready, then you can really do these two things by yourself. And it works great. So. You do okay? Yeah, yeah. And then do you do, like, you do go through one recipe on Yeah, I just do one do... recipe. Okay. I never do, like, the two times the doubled recipe that we do here in the shop. So I always do half what okay. it calls for. So. All right, are we doing a full or half batch? Now? We're doing a full batch for our shop here. Okay. So it'll yield, like, 130 to 150 macarons, meaning that's about 300 shells. So get excited. Get ready to pipe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, so we are going to be doing, um, basically we're going to pipe some shells. It takes a long time to actually um, make the macarons. So I'm going to have you piping some citrus almond macarons. Okay. And then we'll be filling strawberry bergamot. Okay. So And they are hot pink with rainbow sprinkles. The ones we're filling, so they're going to match. Yay! Yeah, I know. It's, that's perfect. <laughs> and first we just do a little stir to kind of make sure that we're not going to process just the flour, just the sugar, so that they're evenly distributed in the food processor. So I just kind of get the bottom, get most of it out. Doesn't have to be great, but just enough. And then we pour some of it into the, into the food processor. We also don't want to overfill. So at home, I don't have a food processor. I know it's kind of a, an expensive appliance and a lot of people don't have their own. So what I do is I use a blender and I just do small increments in there and just pulse it a few times, stir it around, pulse it, and then sift it. And then I put the next increment inside the blender. Okay, take this out, take the blade off. If you see any like caking on your blades, then you know you've probably been processing a little too much. It too can much. turn into butter. <laughs> really? Not really, but you know, it can get really butter-like, like really uh, pasty, and we don't want that. So we're gonna put that in the sifter, we're gonna put another batch in, and we just do it until it's all been processed and sifted. And so. this is enough for 130 macro mm -hmm. macarons. Mm -hmm. macarons. Yeah, macarons. So we looked it up on Wikipedia. Okay. You can say it either way. Yeah, you can. Yes. on the, the context, because I just did it on Snapchat, and I was like, yeah. oh man, I look like an idiot. I just spelled it wrong. And <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm wrong, but they actually said either way. Yeah. So the macaron would be like the American way to pronounce it, and macaron is the French way. Okay. So any, like any French word, like yeah. any French Like dish. balloon and balloon, they said. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. anything like that. Macaron but in, in the pastry world, we say macaron just to distinguish the fact that it's different from the little coconut. Yes, I always got confused macaron. by that. Okay. okay, so they're different pastries, so we say macaron so that it's clear what we're talking about, you know. And now you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we process this and go ahead and sift that in to shake it really good. I feel like I'm in a sandbox. Yeah, you're doing a. You're Is this what you do? Job. There's no yes, better exactly. way to do this. Nope. Doing great. Doing a great I'm job. cooking. You can go up and down or side to side, whatever works best for you. And then at the bottom, I just gently like use my hand, just kind of get some of that through, tap it. But we don't. It really, is turning into butter. Yeah. See how some of it will, will turn a this little is bit. crazy. A little bit cakey. So we want to be careful not to like shove that through the sifter, because if there's any clumps like that, then we're just gonna toss this. Okay. So like we said, you do half the whites in the mixer. We're gonna make this into a meringue. And then half the whites, we're gonna make a well in our dry mixture. Again, this is the almond flour and powdered sugar that we've sifted. We food processed it and then we sifted it, and now it's in this beautiful mixture. It's very homogenous, 
and then we're going to put our whites there and we're just going to set this bowl aside until we're ready to add the meringue to it. So step two <laughs> is that we are going to pour two-thirds cup water into a saucepan. So we have this really nice flat pan here that we use on a hot plate, but at home I just use my stove and then I get like a small pot or just something that's kind of a heavy duty metal is best. Um, and then you put your water in first. We put, do about two thirds cup. Normally you would use like a liquid measurement for liquid measuring, right? But this is just not so finicky that we have to be completely particular. So we're gonna put our water in first and then we put the sugar over the water. And we try not to like dump it all over so that we get like dry granulated sugar along the edges of the pan. We just try to put it kind of in the center and you'll see that the water just spreads over the surface of the sugar and it just kind of absorbs. So we let that do its thing and you can give it a little gentle, you know, shake to kind of let it finish. So what we're going to do now is turn this on a high temperature and at home I just do like a high, you know, okay, a higher. high setting. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're going to wait until we see bubbles covering the whole surface of this pan. And once you see bubbles, then you start taking the temperature. And we're looking for 240, which is softball stage, I think. So. Yeah. So 240. And um, at the same time as this is going, like as soon as we turn the heat on with this, we're also going to be whipping the egg whites over here is it a and making a meringue. Or why, no. why the same time? Because we want this to almost be reaching stiff peaks by the time this is reaching oh, 240. Okay. So this is kind of like the only part that it's I hard. think is really sensitive, is that <laughs> this needs to reach stiff peaks at the same time that this reaches softball stage, which is 240 degrees. Okay. So the trick is to have this on like a medium speed so that it's like, you know, working over here yeah. and it's reaching stiff peaks. And then when this is almost at 240, like just a few degrees yeah. away, then you crank this all the way up and get it to stiff peaks right as this reaches 240. And it works great every time, so don't be scared okay. of this part. I'm already scared. It seems but we'll intimidating, see. <laughs> but it's really not as long Are as you this is going. sugar syrup to the meringue as it was mixing on high speed. We kept it on high and we added the sugar syrup very slowly and I kind of drizzle it against the side of the mixer. We don't want to pour it directly into the whisk otherwise it's going to splash hot syrup everywhere. So just beware. Yeah. That's why long sleeves is a good idea in this spot just because you know you don't know. Um, but pour it directly like along the side of this just in a slow stream and then once it's all the way added Make sure to get all of it out with the spatula and then keep it on high and set a timer for one minute and we're going to let it just really, really become stable at that point by mixing on high for one more minute and then two minutes on medium. So then turn it down to medium and have it for two minutes and it's just cooling it down um, and then we'll turn it off and just let it rest for about seven, seven minutes. And if you're doing it at home and you're doing a smaller batch, five minutes is fine. So now I'm going to show you how to dye the colors, which is one of my favorite parts, actually, because coming from an art background, I really like color. Um, and so we utilize um, Americolor gel paste, and I don't know that the brand is as important as that it's a, like a very potent gel paste. I also know that there's specific colors for dyeing macarons. We've never tested those just because we're a cake shop and we use these colors anyways, but I would say definitely don't use grocery store colors. You want to have a potent color. Um, and so I'm looking for a fairly warm Where yellow. Where do you get these? So I would say that online is going to be your okay. best source. Um, we get them from like a big cake source company that has $150 minimum, so I wouldn't recommend there unless you really want a lot of colors. <laughs> I don't think I want to. Um, but I think, that. like, I would just do an Amazon search, honestly. I think you can get a starter Michael's, kit. Michael's and, and Joanne's has small bottles of Oh, really? Gel. Okay, uh -huh. cool. As long as you don't get the liquid stuff, get the gel. The, the gel. They, they do have, okay. like, a small selection of colors at Michael's and Joanne's. And I do prefer this that to the Wilton gels, actually. Um, Cut for a couple reasons. I think a squirt bottle is very important for, for food coloring. So the Wilton ones come in a little 
container and you have to like take it out with a toothpick, you're going to want a squirt bottle, you don't want to get your hands dirty, they get dirty enough just holding this bottle. So I made these two different yellows, and there's tons of yellows, but just to note, egg yellow is a warm yellow, lemon yellow is a cool yellow, and I'm also going to use a little bit of white. So we use the white for a couple of reasons, any of the lighter colors, um, when you bake them, they're going to brown a little bit. So this is sort of counteracting the brown. It can also take you back from the edge. Like if you over dye a color, you can come back and be like, oh crap, that was way too dark. Maybe I'll put the white in it. Colors that won't work with white are going to be like your rich tone. Like if you're making navy and it was too dark, don't put white in it. It's just going to turn, it won't work. But any color that is kind of a lighter color that would have a lot of light in it, you can utilize white. It's also really great for colors like turquoise or peach that like basically would have white mixed in them anyways to make the color. So I'm going to be mostly using egg yellow because um, I like a nice warm yellow. Um, I'll use a little bit of So you're lemon. not measuring. I'm not measuring, but I am going to mix it. Um, and this is like not an exact science by any means because I'm mixing this here and I want it to appear darker than I actually want. And then when I add all the extra meringue, um, I have to like judge it there. So I'm trying to mix a color that's a lot darker than I want just so that as it stretches out, it comes to what I want. So. And it comes from a lot of experience and I still get it wrong a lot. So I, you know, as I'm mixing, I monitor it and then decide if I need to make changes. But I'm pretty happy with this. It looks very golden. Um, as it stretches out into the almond flour and the meringue, it's gonna like lighten up quite a bit. I have a feeling I might need a little bit more yellow, but I don't wanna overdo it right now. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it how it is, so. So now meringue has been resting for about seven minutes. Five minutes if you try the recipe we're gonna put in the blog. Um, but basically, you're, you don't want it to be super hot, so you want to be able to touch the bowl. So it's like warm. It's but warm. Look like very lukewarm. Yeah, and remember you just poured this 240 degree sugar in, so it was definitely a lot yeah. hotter before. Now it's you know it's cooled down, um, and you just take this beautiful fluffy meringue that you just made, and congratulate yourself for not ruining it. It looks beautiful. <laughs> it looks really good, and it'll be so. See how it's sort of like. You know, it's pretty stiff, but it could be a little stiffer like and it would toothpaste. still be okay. Yeah, it is a little toothpastey. Because it's so shiny. Yeah, so it should be shiny and should definitely have volume to it. Um, and so I kind of come through and take, um, you know, a little bit of the outside powder in first. But really what we're doing is folding this in um, while making sure that we're getting the color we want. So there's this pretty specific way we go. So I'm going to be going all the way around the edge. And I kind of start in the middle, mix, move the bowl, and then kind of draw my spatula out. So if I were to show you what I was doing underneath, I'm kind of just going like this very gently. And then I come all the way to the edge and like fold all the rest of it in. So I'm gonna keep doing that. And what that does is it allows you to mix the macarons without deflating the beautiful meringue that you just made. You're also looking for what, how it acts when it drops off the spatula. So you want it to kind of flow like lava. Perfect. So lava. I think, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so I think I'm very close. We went ahead and got these prepped. So what this is is just a large pastry bag fitted with a 1A tip. Um, it's 1A is basically just like a big circle at the end. So if you have a 2A and you're a that's beginner, fine. that's yeah. a little bit smaller of a circle, of a circle, and that's fine too, um, because it'll just, you know, take a little more squeezing to get get a circle out of it. And you might like that also as a beginner, like the two-way tip. So that it doesn't flow so quickly and you can work a little slower. Yeah, especially if you've never held a piping bag, which can be different. All right, so it's really important. Like you might feel like, oh wow, that was so hard and I'm gonna take a break. Don't take a break right now. You need to go in the bags right away. It's a little bit messy. And if you're doing the home recipe, I think I would still use two bags um, because if you're new to it, piping a bag this big would be hard. <laughs> we are going to be, basically I used this and traced it, it's sort of a little cutter. You can make them whatever size you want. This is sort of our size. You'll note that some people make them smaller than us, some people make them bigger. This size is what we're piping the circle as, but they actually expand a little bit beyond the circle as you hit the pan, which you'll get to see an exciting thing later. Um, but basically pick the size you want and you're gonna wanna trace one parchment and then we tape that down. Now I use a spice cap and that oh, seems okay. to be like the perfect size. So 
just check in your cupboards and you might have something perfect. So now we, we did one tray, um, or one paper, and then we just put another paper, paper over it. Tricky. I know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe a little bit to start to kind of show you, and I'm going to let you do it. Um, but I'm going to get it so the bag doesn't have quite so much in it, so it'll be a little easier. So dominant hand on the back, and see how we're oh, squeezed, okay. like, we, I'm trying not to make sure that stuff's coming out the back, so it's got a little bit of a twist, and then I'm holding from the back, and then I'm putting pressure on it from the back, and then my other hand, the non-dominant hand, is kind of guiding it. So this is a two-hand process, very important, and also another thing I don't think we noted, but you're only putting pressure when you want something to come out of the bag. All right, if you wouldn't mind, so I like to have someone hold it for a second in the beginning. This is the hardest part, is just getting your first couple on, because it, um, the paper likes to move. So as you'll note, I'm using both of my hands here. And the hardest part about this is actually getting all of your macarons to be the same size. And so that would mean being consistent in not only the circle you're making, but the height of the circle. And that's where people have the most problems. It's not that like you can't, you know, get to the circle edge because that's something that's, you know, pretty doable. But it's really surprising how different the macarons are if your height is a little different. The other thing you'll notice I'm doing is taking piping so it doesn't get a tail. Um, so I'm gonna keep going through like that. And it's just at the very end, I'm making this little subtle move. So if I didn't do that, see how there's this like point? So that, that won't go away. Um, and so- It won't go away? Not usually. And so you'll kind of have this little point on there. Um, so- Yeah, they're always so smooth and- Yes, and so we want to have very smooth ones. Anything you would want to add, Camilla, about? Yeah, um, notice that she's piping directly from the center and she doesn't move the tip while she pipes it out. So I'm kind of bracing my pan on the edge. And then I'm gonna kind of do that. So it looks trickier than it is, honestly. It's not, it's not horrible. And then, this is the loud part. And see how they're flattening out and getting nice and shiny? But see the one that I did the point, it didn't flatten out. Yeah. The goal is to try to get them as uniform as possible. And so then, basically this is gonna have to set for, depending on how humid it is outside, anywhere from a half an hour to an hour and a half before you can bake it. Um, and then there's this like system that we use for just testing if they're ready, and it's just basically touching the top. And like, we'll get to that a little bit later. So. At home, I sometimes set up a little fan. Yeah. And I just plug it in and I put it on like a small fan on the table. And then I just have all my pans laid so out. And I just have the fan, it. you know, oscillating or whatever yeah. it does, you know, moving back and forth yeah. to kind of like help dry the surface. And that usually cuts the drying time in half, which is nice. to being ready. Um, I'm able to touch it, but see how it leaves a pock mark? So you'll notice if you've touched them in the beginning that like it was very sticky and it would have left a, I don't know, wouldn't be a pock mark. It would sort of like come back up like a little point. Now we've, we're leaving a pock mark, but they're very close. It should feel a little bit like leather almost um, when it's ready and it shouldn't be so easy to kind of like jostle it like that. So I'd say they have at least 20 yeah, 15 minutes, minutes, 15, 20. Better. Yeah, because yeah. they have a skin, but they are they give a lot under the pressure of your yeah. finger. This is our filling. This is our filling. Um, so we like, so we start with vanilla buttercream as a base, and then we try to like really saturate it with jam, which is a liquid, and then we also saturate it, like not as much, but the oil we add to it. So the buttercream doesn't love getting all this liquid added to it, and so it kind of fights back by breaking like this. So if it looks grainy like that, then you know that it's separated, and you have to just whip it back into it, like emulsify it, re-emulsify it. And it needs to be warm. So I have people come in here all the time and say, I ruined my buttercream and I threw it out. I was like, well, what happened? She's like, well, it's separated. I'm like, well, it's fine. You just have to <laughs> re-whip it. <laughs> yeah, so if you ever feel like your buttercream is not good, you can kind of take it back over a double boiler. You could do the same thing with your mixer and do like a little torch on the side, but you do want to be warming it. And also, just so people know, you have the hot plate on and there's water in this lower bowl. 
Exactly. So, so now I'm going to take it off because it's warm enough. I'm going to keep giving it a little mix. Thank you so much. We're going to put this right into the bag the same way we did it the other time. Great. So we baked these previously because we knew it would take a long time for these shells to be ready but we wanted to show you filling um, and we went for hot pink with rainbow sprinkles because we feel like that is really good with this flavor strawberry bergamot it's very fun um, and so basically um, you're looking for this nice little foot around the outside they're gonna rot like depending on the oven it's gonna be taller or, or less tall but Honestly, sometimes ours are taller too. I mean, it's just depending on the day, depending on the humidity, and depending on how um, how strong your meringue was. Um, and then on the inside, you should have like a nice um, honeycomb. And these ones, like right when they come out of the oven, they're a little bit more crispy. There's a, yeah, but should have like a nice little honeycomb structure there. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of match them up. And I love this part, I think because I liked playing like memory and matching games when I was younger. So now that everything's matched up, we're ready for filling. And it's so easy, it's just, sim it's very similar to this, only I think it's a little bit easier. But I'll kind of talk about what we look for in a good macaron. So you are going to be making a nice little dot in the middle, and we generally go through and do all of them, and then we close all of them. But I want to show you what you're looking for. So you do this dot in the middle, but we like them to come all the way to the edge. And you don't want to see you know, the flat part of the macaron at all. And you also don't want it to be too squished. Like, we think that it's really good to have a good amount of filling. I think this one's actually pretty perfect. So it's a very similar size, maybe a little bit bigger than the foot. It's not just squished in there. Everyone has their own method. I think some people, I mean, I definitely know some people even crunch the shell a little to fill the sh around the shell. Some people like a thinner filling. We like it, we think the filling is kind of the best part, so we want to make sure it's balanced with the shell. go around the edges and like tap mm -hmm. it on mm -hmm. and if you ever feel like it goes over the edge then yeah. you can lift that spot a little bit and it kind of like comes back so I know we just made these and they look amazing and you want to eat it right now I do. it's <laughs> actually better to wait overnight um, and you can either put them in the freezer or in the refrigerator if it's not too wet make sure they're very well packaged if you do with the refrigerator because they can be too wet after overnight but basically um, you really need time for the flavors to meld and for the um, filling to actually kind of take the shell and take a little bit of the crispy edge off of it but luckily we do have these Oh. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of detail. If you're not someone that wants to follow instructions, I'd say skip it all Yeah, together. I would say buy them. <laughs> yeah. I will probably continue buying until I have yeah. my future Marvel Kitchen where I yeah. suddenly become good at making these. <laughs> but I also think that learning how to do the timing of the sugar and the peaks, though it's very specific, doesn't seem impossible. Oh, no. Yeah. So it's very doable. Probably just a lot of practice. Yeah, totally. So hopefully if this inspires you to make your own, now you know what to do. As we've shared before, the recipe will be in the links below, so feel free to go and give it a shot. And also, send me a little Instagram or message of your attempts. I'd love oh, yeah. to see them. That'd, That'd be awesome. awesome. Heather, you can tag us too. We do Instagram at Sweet Heather Ann, and we'd love to see your attempts. Awesome. Heather, Camilla, thank you so, so much for showing us how this works. Thank you. No Good problem. to see you.